So if you're if you're in a situation where your source, your sole source of income, try saying that real fast a few times, um, is coming from W two wages you're really stuck as far as what you can and can't do from a tax planning perspective. And, you know, and I'll show you why here as to what we're up against with a tax code that one, nobody understands, you know, myself included and every other tax pro. And I used to use Bob Dole when he was um, in the Senate because he was probably the, the number one expert on taxes as a Senator, that was his thing. Um, very knowledgeable about it, and, and even he admitted that he was clueless about some of the laws that that he passed or voted for. Um, and so we're we're dealing with a really complex animal, and we're also dealing with this April sixteenth date, and that is not only you know right around tax day, but it's our tax freedom day, and that's the day that the average American has is worked and is now free of working for the government. So think about January, February, March, and the first half of April. Um, that Those days you all work for the government and it's only the last half of April and uh, May and a little bit of, of June here that you've now been working for yourself, um, you know, for your family. And um, But you can see Tax Freedom Day started really quite low here when the, the um, income tax was, was set out about a hundred years ago you can see that it just started going up and it stayed pretty consistent here over the over the years to about 115 days or so and it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference who's president who's in congress or whatever it seems like that's about where where we've been but again when you when you think about how much money you're spending here on your housing on your clothing um, food that sort of thing and taxes exceed that you have to get into something that is going to get you a tax plan, whether that's a very minimal tax plan in that you don't have a business or investments or, or what have you. So we're looking at, you know, quote unquote, just the personal side. That's fine because there's a lot of personal tax planning that you can do. And notice that these are all tax law changes. And, you know, I keep the Trump tax cuts in here, this 2017 um, bill that went into effect in 18, because these laws are still in play and the courts are just starting to interpret these. So if you think about this law came into play for the 2018 year, that tax return was filed sometime in 2019. The IRS has until sometime in 2022 to audit that return. Now let's assume the audit got done in 2021 and we're in tax court, we still don't have a decision. So we don't have decisions yet on this. And then we start looking at all these other tax law changes that came into play um, with respect to COVID under both Biden and Trump. And you see, we've got a lot of different issues that come into play as far as when are we gonna report income? When are we gonna take expenses? And how are the tax laws going to be in our favor this year or next, or you know, taking the unfortunate flip side of that, how are they going to go against us? And you know, I think knowing which way you know we're going to be going. In other words, boy, you know, I don't think my 2022 is going to be very good because I'm I'm just getting this business started, or um, you know, I'm just uh, I'm going to quit my job and and you know start a business or retire or whatever. Um, and 2023 may be better because my business is going to get going or whatever the situation may be, you may have opportunities to decide which year the income and expenses should, should be taken um, and, and just kind of take it from there. Like yesterday, I'm keeping these slides in even though I've got this little no here. So none of these tax changes that are potential are going to happen this year. Um, they may happen next year, but they're not going to happen this year. But I'm keeping them in because for some people, and this goes into the QBI that I was talking about yesterday, um, and by the way, that, that QBI can apply to rental properties. And I'm going to show you today how you can make that work. Um, so it's not just 
a quote unquote business that, you know, I have to have my law practice or I have to be running the, the gas station or 7-Eleven or whatever. It's like, no, you don't. You can have rental properties and still qualify. But for whatever reason, um, when Biden was elected, there was this $400,000 number and it was showing up in the QBI and we're going to start re reducing deductions and we're going to increase taxes and that sort of thing. So again, this isn't going to happen this year, but keep that in mind that we may see that next year or um, in future years. Uh, same thing here, there's not going to be tax increases as far as capital gains go. Um, so none of this is going to apply this year. But again, you may want to review it if you have higher income. If your income is normally in the 400,000 and plus range, you may start looking at ways where you may want to accelerate some income into this year with the thought that maybe next year the tax rates are going to go up. Maybe they won't, but something to keep in mind.